Hey guys, it is Nikkei and friends. Uh, today we have Nikkei with us. With my little white cross blue clicker parrot. White blue cross clicker parrot, sorry. <laughs> and then we got little Elliot down there, if you see him. We also have a new member to the flock. Well, family more like. I guess he's not ne uh, she's not necessarily a bird, but let me go get her. I'll be right back. <laughs> Alright, this is Miss Tipsy. Uh, she was a stray. We uh, rescued her from uh, a dog rescue um, here where we live and she's such, she's such a good dog. She's, she's like hugging me right now. I love her. She's such a good dog. But today, um, it's not, this video is not about Tipsy in her introduction. I will get into that eventually, but, but, um, you go, be free, tipsy, tipsy, it's, um, it's about something I haven't, I, I, I failed to tell you guys about on this platform, um, it's about Kai, so, Mr. Kai, uh, you won't be seeing him in the videos anymore because he's, he's no longer with us, he's, passed away back in July 2021 um, and I was just kind of want to make this video to like commemorate him and also tell what happened and maybe you guys can learn from our mistakes you know okay. so uh, what happened was I could tell that something was wrong with Kai for a little while right there were, there were just like small hints here and there and I kind of put them off because I was like, no, I must be seeing them wrong, right? And honestly, that's not something you should do with a bird because... Did you get away from the board? Okay. Um, <laughs> that's not something you should do with a bird because they don't show signs of illness when they first get sick. It, it, they only show signs of war illness when it gets way worse because as prey animals, they don't want to seem weak, so they don't get picked off or kicked out of the flock, you know? Um, so birds tend to, tend to not show illness or anything like that. That's the point. Um, so if you do see anything weird with your bird, that should be like the first sign that like, not the first sign, but it should be like a big warning that um, you should go seek help. I would recommend going to a vet, definitely. An avian vet. I have a couple of where I'm at now. Didn't really have them back in North Carolina, but we weren't back in North Carolina when this happened. Um, so, let, let's just break it down. Elliot, sorry, Kai got, had PDD, proventricular dilatation disease, which is basically, it's also, it's also called a uh, parrot wasting syndrome because your bird basically just wastes away. It's, it's, a, it's not a good way to die, honestly. They starve, basically, because they cannot digest their food anymore, not properly. Um, so I noticed that he was a bit thin, right? But I was like, no, maybe I'm uh, feeling his keel wrong. Maybe, because I was like, he's eating all the time, right? And he seems pretty active. He still plays with Nikkei and everything, he eats. He, he seems fine, right? But then, like, more things started adding up, you know? Um, he started little, he started acting weird, like, little weird behaviors, a little weird shake of his head, um, re regurgitating. He wasn't regurgitating the Nikkei. He was just kind of, like, trying to... It was almost like he was trying to get something stuck out of his throat, and sometimes he would shake his head, and there would be regurgitation that would go around, you know? Like, that that was definitely concerning to me. I was like, there's, maybe he has something stuck in his crop or something? I don't know. So, um, okay. Sorry, I'm very distractible. We got Miss Tipsy. She's, she heard something, so she's uh, investigating. Um, and then we also started noticing that, uh, I also started noticing that he was sleeping more, seemed a bit more lethargic. That is a huge sign that a bird is sick. 
And it was bef- even before this point where I started getting really concerned and pushing to see a vet. But my mom was insistent or she thought I was just being paranoid. I tried to explain to her the thing about births, right? How they don't show illness and everything. But uh, she just either didn't understand or didn't take it seriously, you know? Um, so, uh, we were planning to take him to the vet, but it was honestly, by the time I was even looking to take him to the vet, it probably would have been too late. It was kind of like on set in that point, like into it. The thing about PDD is it's not, uh, curable. It's treatable, but it's not curable. And in Elliot's case, he had... He most likely always had PDD because it's also a genetic disorder and that's probably where he got it from. That's what the vets had told me. So, um, so he's had this and for some birds, most birds, there are a lot of birds out there that have what it takes to develop PDD. I think it has something to do with avian born virus, um, and how it activates or something, the disease and... Sometimes it can be just a mild illness, and sometimes it can kill your bird, you know? Um, and sometimes it never shows up, you know? Um, but basically, the point is, it wasn't curable. So, it was just, even if we had caught it early, it was more like we were just buying time, you know? Um... But it is treatable. We could have made him more comfortable. I, I wish I could have because that is such a terrible way to go. I wasn't even there for him when when that happened. I was gone for like three days, three or four days. So. Thank you, Nika. Anyways, um, she's, she's, uh, she's holding my hand right now. Thank you. All right. Anyways, um... So, when I came home after the three to four days, right, I found Elliot at the bottom of his cage, lifeless, right? It was, he was gone already. So, uh, I put him in a box and everything. I was still mourning, but I wanted to take, I was shocked and devastated, right? But, cause I wasn't expecting him to come home to a dead bird, right? I wasn't, I mean, I figured something was wrong with him, but I just, wasn't expecting that, you know? But my first concern was the other birds. I didn't know what had gotten Kai. So my first uh, plan of action was separating them um, and also calling a vet, getting a necropsy on Kai, and taking the birds in for a checkup. That was all in succession with each other uh, within a few days. Like, the vet was like two days, one, two days later. Um, Luckily, we were able to get in pretty early. I was able to ease my paranoia on my other birds. Um, it turns out nothing was wrong with them. They seem fine. Uh, they and I also got recently, most more recently, not recently, recently, but like since then, I've uh, gotten the birds tested for PDD, um, or well, Nikke tested for B- PDD, um, because she's a bigger bird. In order to have gotten Elliot on PDD, uh, a a PDD test, uh, his nails are pretty much cut off a lot. Like, there's a lot of nails missing because Nikkei here likes to chomp on them. I don't put them near each other, typically. She's just in here because I can watch her, right? But she's always in my room. They're always in different rooms. This is my little sister's room. This is where Elliot stays. His own big old flight cage. But, um... I need to remember what I was talking about. I get sidetracked so much. Um, hello. So I went and got Nika a PDD test. Um, I was planning to get Elia a PDD test, like I said, but his uh, nails were too small, and so they weren't able to get enough, a big enough blood sample from them. So um, they would have had to have put him under anesthesia to gather the blood sample. Don't put it over here. Um, which would have been dangerous for a small bird like him. So we don't want to risk it. Since Nikkei had gotten the test and uh, 
had a negative result, right? It was, uh, it was not, she didn't have it, basically. She wasn't positive for PDD, right? Um, and he wasn't acting strange or anything. They were like, they kind of talked to me about it and they were like, well, here are your options. Uh, I would recommend not putting him under anesthesia, but it is your choice. And I decided not to put him under anesthesia. I don't want to lose another bird, especially if it isn't really necessarily necessary, you know? Um, so since Nikkei's fine, uh, she, she is around Elliot. She's not like complete, like right now she's around Elliot, but she isn't like with Elliot all the time, you know? So, but I think that's enough that they probably would, if one of them gets sick, the other will probably like catch a little something at least. What are you doing with your foot? Anyways, um, so since Sneaky is not sick, we didn't think Elliot was sick. That's the point. Um, after Kai died, there was, there's a lot, there's a lot of sad news. He had, uh, basically no muscle mass on his, uh, keel or anywhere really. Um, a keel is a good way to f feel where, um, a good amount of muscle mass is. If you, if you have a very sharp keel and like, um, sorry, I'm trying to think of other words besides sharp. Uh, if you have a sharp keel, it's pretty indicative of uh, a bird that is not getting enough food. Um, and I, I had known that Kai had kind of had a sharp keel, right? I was actually checking on Elliot, uh, for a few days, right? For a few days, because I wanted to make sure he was okay after Nikkei got another one of his toes, right? And one of the things I would do is feel his keel, right? And he always seemed like a small bird. He always seems smaller than Kai, just slightly, you know? So, um, I was like, well, I don't know what a sharp keel should really be like. I, I, I know in theory, but like, I don't have, I don't necessarily have anything to compare it to right now. So I went to Kai and I was like, hey, you eat all the time. You probably, <laughs> you probably are healthy, right? So I was, so I felt his keel and it was very sharp. And I was like, no, this must be a mistake, right? Like, uh, he eats all the time, right? And he, at that time, he wasn't necessarily really acting weird, right? So I just kind of put it off. Um, just kind of moved on and stuff. So I had known he was, technically I had known that he was underweight. Um, that's one of the symptoms of PDD. Uh, we, he was also lethargic later on. Uh, his, his the last few days that he was uh, with us, he started getting really lethargic. Um, he was also doing the weird regurgitating thing with his head and everything. Um, he ate a lot. Like when I got feeds out, he was ravenous almost. He was very insistent on getting in the bag. <laughs> like there's small bags. Let me show you. Like when I do treats, you get small bags like this, right? And he would stuff himself all the way down there, right? I mean, he is a small bird and stuff, but I mean, that's probably not something a bird will feel comfortable doing, you know? Because it's like surrounding them, you know? It's kind of weird, you know? So, I um, thought that was a bit odd when I saw him doing that. It's around that time. It was around, definitely around that time where I was like, that, right? I have some <laughs> screenshots of what I said to my mom and how she was like, it's probably nothing, right? Um, there's some, I wish I could have, I had done things differently, You're, you know? There are things I could have done to see the signs. I could have been more proactive in uh, his health. And like really trying to check out everything like that like I said his keel was an early sign sort of like it was one of the first signs I really started noticing um, so I was 
I should have definitely at that point gone to a vet and checked things out. But uh, I did it. But if you guys have the chance, I if you think something's wrong, it's probably wrong. Okay, Especially with little birds, it's you just gotta trust your gut. Especially if you know your little birds, right? I've had these guys for a couple of years. Um, what are you doing down there? Hello. Uh, another thing I sh probably should have done differently that I'm doing now is uh, keeping logs on their weight. So I have a little gram scale in my room and I will take their weight every day, typically in the morning before they eat, right? Um, and I'll take their weight, put it down, and keep a log of it and see if they're gaining weight, losing weight, staying the same. It's also something that my vet asked uh, when I first brought Nike in. They didn't have like truly extensive like records of her, right? She had been to a vet twice before that. Um, she's only like two, almost three years old. She'll be three in June. Um, I'm cusp book July. Anyways, um, June 30th. Anyways, <laughs> uh, come here. Can you step up? Thank you, Nikkei. Anyways, um, I definitely recommend keeping a uh, log of their weight. And I have been told of, that's, that's a record thing that has, I've heard has been recommended by tons of people before, right? But I never thought that anything this bad would happen to my birds. So I didn't think it was like, I didn't want to put in the effort, right? I thought it wasn't worth it, necessarily. I didn't think, not even that it was worth the money, like worth the time, but it would have shown Kai's illness so early on, we could have gotten him treatment. He, we, it's not curable, like I said, but we could have made him comfortable until he passed. We could have had a few extra months with him. We could have, or even years, I've heard. But he just suffered and starved and wasted away without me even truly knowing, you know? It's probably one of the most terrible things I can think of happening to a bird to like die like that, right? You have a, you have a couple of other very worrying disease like PBFD, right? Proventric no, sorry, um, not proventricular dilatation disease, that's PDD. Um, CSI and beacon feather disease. That's another incurable thing um, from, from what I've last heard. Maybe they've done more research on it. Hopefully it will be curable one day, right? There are lots of things that are very concerning. Stop biting me, it's not nice. Here. Alright, she's a little, she has a little naughty sometimes, you know? Anyways, so if I could recommend anything if I could learn anything from this lesson, if you guys could take away anything from this lesson, is to trust your gut when it comes to your birds and get a gram scale, take their weight. You might not, maybe you don't even take it every day, right? Maybe every couple days or every other couple days, right? I, it would have shown something, right? So if you, if you don't think it's worth the effort or the time, I, I think it is. It'll save you a lot of heartache, it will save your bird a lot of pain. I, there's so many regrets I have. <laughs> I'm being really sad right now. Um, let me go. For Mr. Kai. Um, I just hope you guys can don't have to go through the same thing as me and are able to prevent something if something is wrong, right? You're able to catch it early, you know? We have um, Kai's ashes with us now. He's still here. I have his feathers. I have a whole urn for him. 
um, in a little velvet case. I even have like a little petal thing for, uh, or like a seed petal like in shape of a paw print because of the vet. They sent out oh, his ashes and technically I could plant that thing and that little plant and it would grow into something if I took care of it. <laughs> I'm just not good at gardening. Um, but this isn't a house we're staying in for very long. So uh, I wouldn't plant it here if anything. Anyways, I think that's uh, kind of all I have to say. I, I do want to mention that it wasn't like I just learned about PDD, by the way. I had known even before I got birds. I just didn't think it would happen to my birds, right? What are you doing? Right? Um, I had... I just... You just never think it's going to happen to you. You just... You have to, you have to be careful. You have to take steps and show your your birds and other pets uh, health and safety and happiness. Even um, that's kind of all I have to say today. Um, I think we'll have a little. Sorry, can't Elliot. Um, I think we'll, uh, have a little outro. Oh, wait, did you see this? Are you good? It's not even she's trying to be aggressive. She just thinks it's a toy. She's like, oh, that's really nice and chewy, you know? Oh, that's her clack. She doesn't like that. Anyways, I think this video's gone on for long enough. I'm going to see if I can edit it, uh, down a bit, but I'm not good at editing, so, um might have to deal with it as is guys I'm sorry <laughs> so that's kind of that um, I'll see you guys next time uh, on the flip side ladies and laddies bye